Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be checking out this awesome integral which will lead us to a lot of other cool integrals as well as um, the polygamma functions and a lot of cool identities and limits. So I'm really excited for this video. Uh, this is eventually going to be our final answer but you know it's not about the answer it's about the journey. So let's go through that journey. First I'm going to list off some identities that we're going to be using. First off, we have the reflection identity, which is that gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x is equal to pi cosecant of pi x. We're going to be using that. Also, we're going to be using the fact that di gamma of x is equal to negative gamma, where gamma is the Euler-Mascheroni constant, plus this sum. And differentiating both sides, we'll also get that the... Uh, First poly gamma function is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus x squared. All right, and the other major thing that we're going to need is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of ln sine of x. And we're just going to solve this super quick. This is the same as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of ln cosine of x, just using King's theorem using uh, u equals pi over 2 minus x. And we'll just say that this is equal to j, and we're going to solve for j. So if we add together these two integrals and then use the properties of log, we'll end up with the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of ln sine x cosine x dx. But sine x times cosine x is nothing but 1 half times, times sine of 2x dx then this is going to be equal to integral from 0 to pi over 2 of ln 1 half dx plus integral from 0 to pi. Setting u equals 2x, we're going to divide by 2 and we're going to double the length of our integrand. And I'm just going to change the name of u back to x. This uh, integral on the left right here is just negative pi over 2 ln 2. And as you can see from this integral on the right, uh, as sine x goes from 0 to pi over 2, it's the same as the values it takes on going from pi back to pi over 2. So this integral all the way on the right here is just equal to 2j. So overall, when we multiply it by half, it's just equal to j. And that means that j equals negative pi over 2 ln 2, and that's going to be uh, important for our calculation. So that's just this integral right here. All right, now we can go ahead and get started on our integration. So we've done a lot of fractional part integrals in uh, my recent videos. I've grown quite fond of them because I just love the way they kind of slip around and turn into other integrals and turn into infinite sums. And I just really love them. So we're going to start with the same steps that we usually use. We're going to split it up into an infinite number of integrals. So the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 and so on and so forth. So we're going to end up with the infinite sum of integrals from n equals 0 to infinity of the integral from n to n plus 1 of the absolute value of x or the fractional part of x squared over x squared dx. Now at this point we can say that since x is between n plus 1 and n fractional part of x equals x minus n. So we can just write that right there. Now usually at this point I would multiply out x minus n squared into a bunch of different terms and then I would divide them all and I would integrate and then I would sum up the power series term by term. However, in this situation that's actually not going to work out for us. And I'm not going to go through the steps right now because it takes a little while, but essentially you'll get a really nasty infinite sum that I couldn't figure out how to evaluate at all. And even when I plugged it into Wolfram Alpha, it said that it completely diverged, which we know is not true because it's pretty clear that looking at this integral, it does converge. And the reason it does this is because the first term is kind of adding infinity and then subtracting infinity. And also, as the terms get arbitrarily large in this infinite series, they don't go to zero. They get the term the those terms all get larger. And so even though the the sum's value may be finite, 
Wolfram actually isn't able to calculate it. So the way that I am going to do this is a little bit different than the way we've done it in the past, but it's still completely valid. We're going to use u equals x minus n. And the reason this is useful is it'll because, it, because it'll transform our integral into going from n to n plus 1 to some constant. So when you plug in u for x equals n, that's just 0. And when x equals n plus 1, that's just 1. So now instead of our integral being all over the place, it's just on um, a constant. The bounds are constant with respect to n. So du equals d dx right here, so we don't really have to change much. We're going to end up with the, inter or the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1 of u squared over u plus n squared du. And now it seems like this integral might not be too tough to handle. And we could also, in this situation, we could integrate this inside without making any changes. So we could um, say, like, add on the top nu and then subtract nu, and then we could integrate and do the same thing. But the problem with that is we would end up with that same unsolvable infinite series that I talked about before. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to reorganize all of this. We're going to exchange the sum and the integral. We're going to end up with the integral from 0 to 1 of u squared times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over u plus n squared du. And the reason I'm doing this is because, as I stated in the intro, this sum is actually equal to digamma 1 of u. Uh, I don't know the exact name for this. Sometimes you call it the trigamma function. You could call it like the first polygamma function, but it doesn't matter. This is the function that it is equal to. And so we can actually just substitute this in, and now we're integrating this function rather than trying to integrate um, this nasty infinite sum. So we're going to end up with the integral from 0 to 1 of u squared digamma 1 of u du. And the way to solve this is we're just going to do integration by parts. So we're going to integrate digamma 1 of x, and we're going to differentiate u squared. So we're going to end up with u squared digamma of u evaluated at 1 and 0. And I'm just going to focus on evaluating this first. Now, an important limit that I want to talk about here is the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared digamma 1 of x. And the reason I want to talk about this limit is it's going to be really helpful at evaluating um, the values of our function at these bounds here, because a lot of times we're going to end up with the limit as x goes to 0 of like x squared times digamma of x in this situation. And the problem is digamma of x at the, in this situation is infinity. And so we're ending up with infinity times 0, and we're, we're going to do, have to do a bunch of the hospitals rule, right? But the, there's actually a much easier way to do this. So with this limit, digamma of 1 of 0 goes all the way to infinity, as we can see by the definition, because we have uh, 1 over 0 in that infinite sum. And x squared goes to 0. So we have a 0 we have a zero times infinity situation, so we're probably going to use the hospitals rule. But there's actually an easier way to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1 over x squared on the bottom. And on the top, I'm going to substitute in this sum definition. But instead of starting at 0, I'm going to start at 1. And for the 0 term, that's just when n equals 0, so that's just 1 over x squared. Now notice, that as x goes to 0, this sum on the right here becomes the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And that's famously equal to pi squared over 6, which is very much a constant number. Even if we nudge x to the right or left a little bit, it's still going to be constant, and it's not an infinite number. On the other hand, 1 over x squared is infinite. So if we multiply by x squared on the top and bottom, we're going to end up with the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 plus x squared times this whole sum. But since this sum is finite, this part is just going to go to 0. And so overall, our limit is just equal to 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and make some more space, and I'm going to show you how this helps us. All right, so when we plug in 1 at, at these bounds right here, 
we actually don't have to make any simplification because uh, u squared is just going to be 1, and di gamma of 1 is famously negative gamma. So that's going to be pretty simple. But for this other term, we're going to have to do a limit as u goes to 0 of u squared di gamma of u. And the reason we have to do this nasty limit is because di gamma of 0 is infinity, while u squared as u goes to 0 is, of course, just 0. So we're going to rewrite this so that we can apply the hospital's rule. Now we have an infinity over infinity situation, so we're, we can differentiate and use the hospital's rule. So on the bottom, this is going to become negative 2 over u cubed. And on the top, this is we're just going to get a little 1 right there. Now I'm going to rearrange this limit, and I'm going to bring the u cubed back to the top. So um, I can just write this as plus 1 half on the outside. And I'm going to split this up into two limits right here. The limit as u goes to 0 of u times the limit as u goes to 0 of u squared di gamma of 1 of u. Now notice this limit is what we just evaluated, which was actually equal to 1. And this limit is obviously just 0. So overall, this whole term is going to completely disappear and go straight to 0. And that's why I wanted to do this the hospital's rule and also prove that limit, because it just makes everything a lot easier on us. The next thing we're going to do is simply apply um, integration by parts again. So this time we're going to integrate di gamma of u and we're going to differentiate u. Now as a reminder, di gamma of u is equal to gamma prime of u over gamma of u and integral of di gamma of u du is equal to ln gamma of u plus c. So we don't need to worry about the plus c because we're doing integration by parts. So this is going to be minus 2 um, u ln, oh, sorry, that's not ln, evaluated at 1 and at 0, plus 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of ln gamma of u du. All right, now at uh, when u equals 1 for this first bound right here, gamma of u is just going to be 1, and so ln of gamma of u is going to be 0, and so that's just going to disappear. And as u goes to 0, uh, gamma of u is going to go to infinity, and so ln gamma of u is going to go to infinity as well, and so we're going to have 0 times infinity. So really quickly, let's just do this off to the side. Limit as u, u goes to 0 of u ln gamma of u. As you might imagine, we're just going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're just going to use the hospital's rule twice. So now this is a infinity over infinity situation, so we can differentiate both the top and bottom. So that's going to be negative 1 over u squared on the top, and this is going to become di gamma of u on the top. And this was actually the same limit as the one we just did, this one right here, um, as u goes to 0, right? And we just proved that that's 0. So this one's also going to go to 0. So this is also going to disappear, and I can actually just erase this entire term. All right. Now, all that's left to do is this last integral. For this last integral, we're going to have to use King's theorem. So we're going to have negative gamma plus 2i, where this is i. Let's go ahead and evaluate i. I'm going to go ahead and actually call it i1, because um, i would be our original integral that we were trying to solve. Another form of i1, using King's theorem, if we were to do um, a substitution with 1 minus u, and then use uh, it's basically the same thing as King's theorem, we would get that this is also equal to ln gamma of 1 minus u du. Then, adding two of these together, we would get the integral from 0 to 1 of ln gamma of u plus ln gamma 1 minus u. But because of the properties of the natural logarithm, we can just combine those together. Next, we're going to apply Euler's reflection formula, which I stated at the beginning. So this is just going to become pi cosecant pi u. And then we're going to go ahead and split those up. So we're, the integral from 0 to 1 of ln pi du is just ln pi, right? 
And then we're going to add the integral from 0 to 1 of ln cosecant pi u du. We're going to do v equals pi u, uh, dv over pi equals du. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do this right here. We're going to end up with the integral from 0 to pi of cosecant v dv, and we're going to have a 1 over pi on the outside. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is, since we're integrating from 0 to pi, and cosecant is uh, the same reflected from 0 to pi over pi over 2, I'm just going to write this as plus 2 over pi, integral from 0 to pi over 2, of ln cosecant v dv. And finally, cosecant is just sine to the negative 1, so if I make this a negative sign right here, this is ln, the same as the integral of ln sine v dv. Finally, this integral is the integral that we proved at the beginning of the video, which was just equal to negative pi over 2 ln 2. If you notice here, this actually cancels perfectly, and so we're just adding ln 2. So that means that 2i1 equals, uh, equals ln 2 pi. And our overall integral was equal to negative gamma plus 2i1. So that means our overall integral is negative gamma plus ln 2 pi. Wow. So um, I'm not sure how well I presented this integral in this video. I'm actually not super proud of this video the way I did it. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the integral and the video. I found this integral to be incredibly exciting and really fun to evaluate just because of all the cool different tricks that we were able to use as well as the uh, introduction of the polygamma functions through that cool infinite series that we got. So I hope I made this video enjoyable for you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed the cool integral and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.